Hello everyone, it is Joe here from OmniPoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. If you're looking for PTCG live codes, make sure you check out the Town store. You can get a 5% discount on your orders using that code OmniPoke. For today's video, I'm going to be going over my Stellar Crown buy list. The set is of course out now, so we can be opening our packs, setting these cards aside if they can be playable for now or the future, as well as keeping an eye on what cards we need to be purchasing if there are upcoming tournaments you're going to be playing in. Starting off with the core essentials, these are cards that are expected to be involved in tier one or two contenders or have obvious future potential. We're going to start off with the only EX which I recommend picking up for this set and that's going to be the Terrapagos EX. Now I'm saying a two plus count because I do think Terrapagos could be splashed into some archetypes just as a useful colorless Terra Pokemon that could be really handy in some Palkia builds, could be handy just to have a Terra Activator within your deck for cards like Area Zero Under Depths or possibly Briar. This is a decent attacking option within some archetypes. I definitely could foresee some colorless Pidgeot based builds looking to have Terrapagos in here as well. But if you want to build entirely around Terrapagos as your attacker, maybe looking at its secondary attack, the Crown Opal, or having that unified beatdown and going very wide on the bench with Area Zero Under Depths, you might want to get the full four copies. So I recommend two just for general use, but for if you want to lean into building around the Terrapagos. Then I think the Noctowl line is a really great supporting engine. We have lots of great Terra Pokemon in the game right now, and that Fan Rotom gives us great searchability for that card as well. So I do think picking up a 3-3 line of the Noctowl makes a lot of sense here. Typically, you won't go to the full 4-4 line because you'll probably start weaving in things like Barrel or Pidgeot as a secondary colorless support mon within your deck list. So I think the 3-3 is perfectly sufficient in all the builds I've made so far. Bouffant is also a really interesting one. Can work well with Terrapagos, can work well in a more sort of colorless control style deck, buffing up that Blood Moon Ursaluna. So I think three Bouffalant makes a lot of sense here. You need two of them to be in play in order to activate the Curly Wall ability. So three sort of helps around prizing this, that, and the other. And if some get knocked out or if Area Zero is bumped, that sort of thing, sounds like the sweet spot to me. Two copies of the Fan Rotom. I absolutely adore this card. It has a very decent one energy attack that can do 70 as long as there's a stadium in play, which is great for initiating prize races into, you know, evolving Pokemon or some engine Pokemon in the game right now. And that Fan Call ability gives you so much more consistency in the deck. Just one Nest Ball, one Buddy Buddy Poffin, one Ultra Ball gets you flying with colorless Pokemon. You can get multiple Hoot Hoot down. You can get that Bit Barrel or Pidgey down on the board as well. Set you up nicely for the following turn. And I think a number of decks will be looking to incorporate a Terra Engine thanks to how good the Fan Rotom is on its own. Of the final few Pokemon, the Archiludon and the Duraludon, these definitely are for the future potential. We already know about an Archiludon EX from the Surging Sparks expansion coming out in a few months time. And that card seems to have a lot of promise. It has inbuilt acceleration, it can remove its own weakness, and it's quite a tanky Pokemon. So picking up these Duraludons, which seem like the optimal one right now, because it has an attack for 80 plus 10 for each damage counter on itself, and obviously if you're copying it from the EX on top of it, and having like the Relicanth in play, for example, this is going to be the best attacking Duraludon, because it can do a decent chunk. And then the Archiludon uh, allows you to have free retreat with Pokemon that have Metal Energy attached to it, so it could be splashed into that deck, just to give you more mobility within your list. They're going to be bulk cards for like three months, but then I feel like we're going to be inserting them into the new Archiludon EX archetype, so definitely want to pull out of your bulk. Onto the trainer cards then, a couple of very solid uh, A-spec cards. We have the Grand Tree Stadium card, definitely a useful one for Stage 2 archetypes. As we know, Dustamart is one of the strongest Stage 2s to build around right now. Pidgeot also can take advantage of this card, and there is decent search for stadiums with the Chorus's tenacity as well, so you can get pretty cheeky trying to give yourself guaranteed search of this within the deck. And because the timing of Dustamart is so crucial, the Grand Tree can help you elevate yourself straight into that Dust Noir, so it really can allow you to have these power spike turns. It is a pretty solid A spec that I'm sort of coming around on. I think it might make it into a number of Charizard variants, maybe some Pidgeot controlling variants as well, uh, because it can just be that helpful. Then Sparkling Crystal, definitely going to be the front running A spec for the Dragapult EX archetypes. It could end up being worthwhile in a few other Terrastal decks as well. The new Cinderace, the new Galvantula might look at this card. Even some Crown Opaling Terrapagos lists could also have this in their 60. A card like this that simply reduces the attack cost of Terra is just a very versatile option and I think it gets more versatile as more cards are printed as well so it's definitely one you want to pick up. The Area Zero Under Depth Stadium is very powerful and is going to be around for a long time I believe because there are a lot of very strong basic Terrastal Pokemon and attacking Terrastal Pokemon in the game right now. Being able to fill your bench to eight slots just gives you so much more control over the game with more engine Pokemons coming down and a number of attackers benefit from having additional bench spaces so this is definitely going to be a build around for a number of archetypes. Four copies of the Glass Trumpet as well it is quite niche in its energy acceleration 
Pokemon, but it can attach to those colorless Pokemon. And as we know, there are some great engine colorless Mons in the format right now. Terrapagos could definitely take advantage of this. I know Palkia variants are looking to have this and even splashing in different types of energy within their deck list. For example, having Iron Leaves, which can steal grass energy. So the Palkia deck has a means of KOing Charizards a little bit easier is a nice tech option that I've been enjoying right now. It has that synergy with Blissey EX, of course, or just energy switch, similar to how we've seen Ogre Pond energy switch to the combo for a very item heavy style deck. You could try that with Pokestops and suddenly you're filling your deck with a bunch of item cards. Definitely versatile acceleration, one that's really intriguing and can be built around for a number of archetypes. Equally, Chris Min's an interesting support card, giving yourself that nice energy acceleration, definitely solid for some dragon attacking decks. I think once again, Dragapult will be looking to include this card. Also, as more Terra Pokemon are released that have those strange, wacky attack costs, the more we're going to look to a card like this, even if it is just in one or two counts within our 60s. Speaking of which, Briar can only be used when your opponent has two prize cards remaining, which means you're never really going to put many of them within your deck list, but it is an all-star means of flipping the game and actually taking multiple prizes all in one go with your Terra Pokemon. It's going to be very strong in Raging Bolt, Charizard, Terrapagos decks will have this, Dragapult might even include it. There's a lot of versatility around this Briar card. Again, you're going to have it in low counts, but it completely flips games. The Gravity Gemstone tool is also pretty solid. I'm thinking about this in my Dragapult lists, also my Gardevoir lists. These are already Arvin heavy decks. So even having low counts of the gemstone, you can pluck it out for when you need it. It makes the counter catch plays, the Iono plays, even more disruptive when you're shoving a gemstone onto your active and increasing the opponent's retreat cost if we are trying to set up damage with different sniping attacks and whatnot. Maybe trying to buy turns of reprieve without getting hit back. And also, of course, some controlling archetypes could also look to include the gemstone in the deck. Again, Arvin Heavy. They already play a large split of different tool cards. We've seen how handheld fans become the popular choice. But possibly we could move away from a block Snorlax approach and have more of an attacking controlling archetype with Gravity Gemstone increasing the retreat cost and sort of adding to that blocking effect that Snorlax provides so happily. Getting on to the Believer buy list then, these are cards that may prove themselves to be mid-tier contenders or have a good amount of potential. There was one other ace spec in the set and it's the Deluxe Bomb. Now I've only really seen this so far showing up in like a very heavy Cornerstone Ogre Pond plus Mimikyu deck. You can shove the bomb onto one of those Pokemon so that when your opponent is having their answer attackers into these abilities, they're immediately getting hit with the Deluxe Bomb and hopefully you can KO it with a follow-up attack from one of those backup basics. The only other archetypes I can really see employing the Deluxe Bomb would be like an, a basic attacking deck which is sort of slow to get going, something like an Ancient Box maybe which has low damage output from the start but slowly ramps as they go, so having that extra burst from Deluxe Bomb could be useful. There are a couple of interesting like basic tech Pokemon, there's the Diancy which can deal more damage for special energy attached to your opponent's Pokemon. There's the Morotum which can actually discard a bunch of special energy from your opponent's Pokemon as well as tool cards. And then there's the interesting Confei, which forces both players to draw three cards. That's obviously a good cycle for you to end your turn on whilst you're trying to recover resources, similar to ending on a Rotom V ability. But at the same time, we have the Hand Trimmer, we have Zerosix Machinations. There's ways that we can discard the cards that we're forcing our opponent to draw, almost turning Confei into something like a Great Tusk Mill archetype, where you're making them draw cards and then you're eventually discarding those as well. The Food Prep Kofu style deck, the Crabominable, the Veluza, which have reduced energy attack costs for more Kofu in the discard pile. Definitely a gimmick right now. We're not going to see it do too much, but there is a perfect mixer A spec which discards five cards from your deck, which will be a really easy way for you to bin off all those Kofu and suddenly start getting cheap attack costs going. That Veluza could be attacking on the first turn for 110, similar to how we've seen Cramorant be an early pressure poking Pokemon, and Crabominable can just do 250 for one water energy. That's starting to get much more appealing. Might still be somewhat of a gimmick archetype, but certainly gets better when that A spec is printed. There are a few EX Pokemon which I think fall just a little bit short of the mark right now, but still might be within the format as mid-tier contenders. Galvantula does have lightning-type coverage, which, which is quite relevant for Pidgeot EX and Palkia V-Star right now. It has a fairly efficient two-energy attacking option, and the Fulgurite is a frustrating item-blocking effect. The attack cost is expensive, so it's a real build-around if you want to get it going, but there are payoffs here, and the Joltik actually is a great way for you to power up lots of energy. It might even be the case that you just want to pick up Joltik, because in its own right, it accelerates four energy for one attachment. That is a lot of acceleration, just from a one-energy Pokemon. On. And both Lightning and Grass are very relevant types to have in the format right now, so Joltik might be worthwhile even if you don't care about Galvantula. There's a couple stage twos. There's Hydrapple. We know there's, of course, the Festival Lead Diplin already in format. That's kind of the optimal one right now. But Hydrapple has a means of accelerating energy into play and deals more damage for the amount of Grass energy on all of your Pokemon. Unfortunately, the Aplin and Diplin both have like low hit points, which is kind of putting me off this archetype. But we know this damage output can get pretty out of control if you lean into a Teal Mask Ogre Pond build. Cinder 
Embrace does the magic but number of 280 and also has a 180 damage sniping option. It's also a free retreat stage two, so you can play Featherball within the list alongside Pidgeot EX to search out both of your stage twos quite comfortably. But you will have to still jump through a number of hoops to get the Cinderace rolling effectively. You might have to incorporate Double Turbo Energy, Magma Basin, a number of basic Fire Energy, obviously Sparkling Crystal as an option as well. That's a lot of space being committed to already two stage two archetype. So it's a lot to juggle really, and I think it'll ultimately be less consistent than both Charizard and Dragapult. The Daxbun EX has the Time to Chow Down ability, definitely a powerful one. I think we currently lack great evolution search right now, but as soon as we get better Evo search, a card like this just gets so much better because you can time the Daxbun a lot more effectively and have that big healing effect for other evolution decks. Right now, I'd only really look at like attacking controlling archetypes, something like a Luxray EX with Pidgeot. Both require double turbo energy, so just evolving into a Daxbun can heal, you remove that energy, then you can immediately swing another one back on and continue attacking. We get a new Charger Bug, actually, which can search more Charger Bug with its attack. A spiritual reprint to Frogadier and more recently Curlia with Mirage Step. There is actually a Vikavolt that does 120 damage plus 80 more for each Charger Bug on your bench. So ideally you could be hitting 280 with this Vikavolt for two attachments. There's also a Grubbin, which can search out multiple Grubbin. So both your Grubbin and Charger Bug give you one energy attachment options, which just get you into the game. And ideally Vikavolt's going to be this high damage output option. You are going to be plagued by prizing and spreading decks certainly, but there might be some selling points around this archetype. Could be a fun one. So Lazzle has a very dangerous attack in that sudden scorching. If you've used his six Machinations, you can put your opponent down to zero cards if you evolve the Salazzle that turn. There is a Salandit from Crown Zenith, which I believe is the optimal one. It can simply search for an extra basic Pokemon. And if you are trying to build a sort of handlock approach, I think Salazzle is the best Pokemon in format that we can use right now. The main reason I think hand trapping strategies aren't working is that we have so many abilities that can burst draw. We have the Barrel, Mew EX and a lot of archetypes, Teal Mask, Ogapon. So many ways people can just draw out of our lock. But if the format starts to shift around different Pokemon, Salazzle can definitely be a terrifying option. And finally, we have Marowak with the Bone Vengeance attack. For two colorless, you do 60 plus 120 more if any of your Cubone are damaged on your bench. It doesn't sound all that impressive, but the Cubone from 151 has the Cheering Bone ability that increases your Marowak's damage by 30 for each of these Cubone on the bench. So Cubone is a single prize fighting type which can deal 250 damage for a double turbo energy. Pretty impressive stuff if you've got that optimal setup. All in all, a pretty inexpensive set for us this time around, which I'm very happy to see. However, there is still a lot of cards that you might want to explore and have decent potential for the future. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Let me know which Believer cards you're going to be buying and I'll see you tomorrow for another video. Cheers.